Brethren and friends of the Savior Tabernacle, welcome to this another broadcast from your host, the Pastor Horace Forbes, as he continues with the theme, Christ Loves the Church. Grab your Bibles and let's study along with Pastor. Today's topic is distribution of gifts to the church. And it's taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. As we study to show ourselves a put to God, let us just turn to Pastor Love as he reads. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation bear it your call with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, for bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are calling one hope of your calling. Verse uh, 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we study the word, I just want as believers for us to know where we are, you know, and what is our gift that God has given to us because he distributes this to everybody. So once you are a believer, there's a gift for you and you must know what is your gift. So before, before I turn back over to pastor, I'm just going to pray and then we'll ask you to share, to like, subscribe. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this. Another privilege you have given us to come before you. God, you are an awesome God. You're just good. We just thank you for your goodness and for your love and for your mercy. And for your give, giving us the ability to share your word and to discuss, Lord. Oh, God, may this word word that is going out today be meaningful and someone lost someone will find it refreshing and a blessing and will learn something from it and we somehow find their niche in the ministry in what you have called them to do oh god someone might be struggling thinking that he's not worthy there's nothing that he can do but help that one to realize that it's you who are doing the giving and you are bestowing gifts on everyone. So bless us now, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I turn over to Pastor. Amen. Pastor Paul, so over to you. Thank you very much, Sister Forbes. And as we continue to study, uh, Christ loves the church. And today, we'll be looking on the distribution of gifts to the church. Christ distributed gifted men to the church. And as Ephesians said, for the development of the believers. It means to give out or to share or to spread out. And this is what Christ did. Because in Acts and the Epistles of the New Testament, there are many truths concerning the church of God. God gives excellent gifts. Yes. And it's the virtue of his grace. The gifts of the church are mentioned in verses 7 to 11. And verse uh, 7 speaks of the, the church, which is body, one person, 
And therefore the gifts are given to the church like these gifted men. Especially in verse 12, for the perfecting of the development of the saints and for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. These are gifted men for the development of the body of Christ. These men were given to the church by God not to play or to play acting but to do his work. And as we have been mentioning that the birthplace of the church was at Pentecost. But in chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible said that there is one body. One body. And so far we have looked and got already. One body of believers on earth today. This church is formed into a common body by the beloved, darling Holy Spirit. And people would like to segment the body in different parts. And they might be saying, I'm not a part of, the, of that one body. But brethren, as long as you are saved by the grace of God, you are a part of the body of Christ. As we have been looking in Acts, that whenever a person is saved, that person is added to the body of Christ. And therefore, you cannot segregate or separate yourself from the body of Christ. The Bible said Christ is the head of the body. And we need to recognize that in chapter 5 and verse 25, it said, Husband, Love your wives, even as Christ what? Mm -hmm. Love the church and gave himself for it. So he loved the church with a special love. And therefore he is the head of the church. In verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having any spot or wrinkle. So brethren, we need to recognize that. And we need also to appreciate that Christ is the head. And therefore we cannot get away from it. In chapter Ephesians 1 and verse 23, which is, the, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all things. And in verse 22, and I put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things, the church. So we are saying that Christ is the head of the body. And Paul teaches us that Christ has head in heaven and he controls the body on earth. And it speaks of the, uh, of the head, speaks of authority, it speaks of leadership, and it speaks of power and the seat of intellect. The head and the body share the same life, interest, and uh, prospect. The head is not complete without the body. And we can safely say Christ, who is our Savior, is not complete without the body. Because the head and the body work to back together. The verse we read in Ephesians 1 and verse 23, the church is his body. And in the fullness of him that filleth all things. But thirdly, all believers are members of the body. And we need to get that clear. All believers, whether you are a bishop, a pastor, evangelist, it doesn't matter who you are, you're a member of the body of Christ. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The moment a person is saved is added to the church as a member of the body of Christ. So, Sister Forbes, there's an addition going on constantly. And every day, God is adding to the church. 
It does not matter what race, what color, nationality, or culture, or language, and let me say denomination. And therefore, Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12 to 26. He said, There are many members in the body. Many members make the body. And every member has a function to perform. You need to function in the body according to the gift that God given to you. And all members have not the same office. True. And when you think of the human body, there are many members. And the eye is different from the hand. And the hand is different from the ear. Because each member of the body has a particular part to play. And the welfare of the body depends on all members working together. And therefore, if you are part of the body of Christ, there should be mutual working relationship. We are working together for a particular purpose. And none of us can say that we are better than the other. And even in the physical body, the eye cannot say, I am better than the hand. Now the feet can say, I am better than the earring. All part all have a part to play in the in the body of Christ. And therefore, all the members of the body need each other. There is no cause for envy or discontent. First Corinthians chapter 12, 15 to 17. There is no time for boasting. We are working together. Sixthly, all our members have one body. And as I said that there should be mutual care, sympathy, and joy as we labor together in God's vineyard. But another thing, the Holy Spirit is the representative of Christ in the church. He is here on earth representing Christ. When he ascended back into heaven, the Lord Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be his representative on earth. And therefore, we need to look at the activities of the Holy Spirit in the church. The Bible said he, see, he leads the believers into worship. Whenever we go to church to worship, he is the one that is leading us to worship daily. And we find that in, uh, in the scripture. He inspires his prayer, his, his prayer. Whenever we pray to him, sometimes we do not know how to pray, but the Spirit is there, what? Making intercession for us. We cannot put our words together, but the Spirit takes the word and present them, yes, to the Father. But thirdly, he empowers our preaching. So therefore, there is no need for us to be boasting. He is the one who galvanizes us. And he is the one who teaches us and leads us in the preaching. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As ye know what manner of men ye were among you for your sake. Because whenever we preach the word, we are in the spirit demonstrating in the spirit. Because he's the one who in, 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 uh, empowers our preaching. But fourthly, he guides them into activities. Especially when you go to church, he's the one that is guiding us. And he raises up our seers in the church. When you are a bishop, elder, a pastor, it doesn't matter what position 
you might be, it is the only blessed Holy Spirit who raises up people to perform in the church. But sixthly, he bestowed gifts for growth and development. And this is what we have been looking on in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And he gave somewhat apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some what? Teachers. So we need to know this very important aspect of the gift of the church because it guides believers into all truth. So the church of God is holy. It's not an entity that is thrown around. We are God's people. We are called out set of people. And God is calling a nation, a people for his name. And he sets the church apart for himself to live practical life, practical holiness. No wonder Peter said, be ye holy because I am holy. So gifts are given for the development or the edifying of the church. And this is what Paul is saying for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And God wants the church to go spiritually and in numbers. These are gifted men who are given special ability to build the church. And therefore, whatever gift you might have, God is expecting you to use your gift in the body of Christ for the development of the church. And the gifts that were given then were apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Well, the apostles and, and prophets were concerned with the foundation of the church. And I would say that they are passed away. And these those people want to make themselves into apostles and into uh, a prophet. But do we really need those? These are of the past. However, we have evangelists, we have pastors, and we have teachers. The evangelists go into the world and they preach the gospel and bring sinners to Christ and leave them in the hands of the local church. And this is the work of the teachers in the local church to preach, to teach these saints so that they may understand so they can know the doctrine, so they can grow and develop. The pastors take care of the, of the flock, nourishing the sheep, encouraging them and guiding, guiding them from evil. Because brethren, we are living in an evil world. And God put the pastor there for a particular purpose. And if you are saved, it is very important for you to find a church, a church that is pastored by a man of God, a servant of God, who knows the doctrine, who are able to pass on sound, solid teaching to the members. And I wonder Paul said for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Why? Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ till that we end for it be no more children. No wonder Peter said, 
grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth. So the pastor takes care of the flock. The teacher presents the doctrine of the scripture. These are gifted men and God put them there for a particular uh, purpose. And you cannot say, I am saved, but I don't want to join the church. You cannot say, I am saved, and I don't want to go to church. That is not right. That is an error on your part. The Bible said, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. So in closing, we have evangelists, those who would go out and preach and bring in the sinners. They are made saints and they are put in the church. The pastor, he is there to take care, yes, of the believers. And the teacher is there to teach the word for the purpose of building up the believers in Christ. So that you can be strong in the Lord. And my encouragement to you today. If you are saved. Find a church. If you are Christian. Find a believing church. And attach yourself. To that local church. So that you can get teaching. May God bless these words to your heart. May God glorify himself in you. And may God speak to you. That as member of the body of Christ, you can find worse. You can be developed and you can grow. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that you bless to us your word and glorify yourself in us. Make thy word meet. Use thy word to strengthen that wayward person. That one who might say, I'm a Christian, but I don't want to be a part of a local church. May your word today be a blessing to that person. These verses we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.